Well, hello friends. I am in the garden today and I'm doing something I wasn't going to do till later in the summer, but I had the energy and had the gumption. So I thought I'm going to do it now and it takes a little bit of work, but you're going to see here behind me what it is. So I have recently been talking in stories and different things that I have four of these statues. They're new, but it's a company that casts from old models or like old molds of antique pieces. So they represent the four seasons. So I have four of these busts and you know, I'm a thing for statuary and for anything that makes a statement in the garden. My whole philosophy with gardening is it has to make me happy and this is what makes me happy. It also, I like to have my garden feel like maybe it's been here for years and has weird stories to tell in history, even though most of it's all brand new. I think that's the fun and that's what this is doing. So today I'm going to be adding these four limestone plinths. They're solid limestone, very rough cut. You can see on the edges and then the cast bus on top, which I'll spin this around so I can show you. So just to get the orientation, here's my formal area of my garden. My house is over here. We are all the way on the other side where I have kind of a wind row of some arborvitae. You see two had to be replaced a few years ago, so they're a little smaller. These are all Nigra arborvitae. Big green lush growth. But what I'm doing here is every other one, I'm putting a rock basin, see the rock, with a big limestone plinth and then this bust. So it's big and substantial enough that even from a distance you can really see it and that's what excites me. I just love the look of it. So along with this there's going to be obviously three more of these now. So I did one and so going down the line there's going to be four total. Eventually someday here what my future goal slash plan is for this area is I'd love to have a, have a rhododendron and azalea bed all along these trees. It gets a little bit more shade than other parts of my yard. It gets a little bit of sun during the day obviously but I think it'd be a really good spot for that and I think someday these would be so fun popping out of that garden or flower bed. But until then I think they're just fun statement pieces too that I'm going to keep here. Now what I want to make sure is this is such a heavy limestone base. Like these are very heavy. I can't really move them on my own. Obviously that's why I have a big skid loader here. And I want to make sure they don't settle or move too much or become off center because they're so heavy it'd be really hard to redo them. So what I'm doing is putting in a rock base and that's what I want to show you today and then show you when it's done here. But if we come over where the second one's going to be you can see I've already started. So what I do is I start by cutting out the sod. There's the sod and then I dig out the dirt. Now depending on where you live and how deep you would need to go it could change because what you want to do is worry about your frost layer. How deep that frost goes into the ground. So I go anywhere from 6 to 12 inches deep. This is more probably around that 6 to 8 inch mark. Which for these since it's not holding up a really tall column or anything I'm not too worried. But this is the same of what I did by my front entryway where I have two urns on these same plinths. So I dug out the sod and now I dug out some soil which I dumped this one time. Um, and you can see already we're kind of dry here. This is pretty early in the year and we're already dry which I don't like. But what I'm doing now is putting in a crushed limestone for rock. And what I like to use here is it has a lot of fill in it. So do you see how it has big pieces but then also a lot of kind of that fine sandy grind. That means it packs in really well and the weight of this limestone will really crush it. So the reason we do a rock is because rock doesn't hold on to the moisture. So it allows the moisture to wick through it, go down to the ground, but then when it freezes rock doesn't move near as much. So that's why I'm putting this rock in. And again, these aren't to hold up a foundation or a house. So this isn't for that. This is just so they don't move as much on me. So I don't have to like level them off every year. So I'm going to finish by putting some rock in here and then we'll move on and cut the other two out. So I do want to make sure you can see that I am using a scoop shovel here as opposed to my spade that I dug out the soil with. That's because the spade has a nice sharp edge and I don't want the rock to dull it. So I'm going to use a shovel to fill this up with rock and that way it won't dull this edge because that's what this is for. This gets really rough with the use it gets. Now you can see that's pretty simple what I did. I made the square just about the same size or slightly bigger than the big plinth I want to put in. I don't want it to be smaller. Now if this was for a foundation we would use a tamper. If it was for a bricked paver patio we would make sure to tamp it and kind of shake that whole area to get it really tight. Again this is just for something out in my yard. I'm not too worried here. So we're not we're not professionals. We're just home gardeners. And so this is going to do really well for this area. So now I'm going to move on down. I'm going every other tree and I'm going to do two more of these big squares I'm going to cut out. Okay I move the skid loader over closer to where I'm going to put the square which is right here. And 
all I need to do is cut it out. And I only, I use a half moon edger first just so I can make a nice cut mark, which you're gonna be able to see here. But now what I wanna do is make sure it's gonna be in line. So I could set up a string line. Again, this is just out in my yard. I'm not too worried. So I've been eyeballing it. You know, perfection, it's not worth it. So what I'm gonna do is make sure it's somewhat. Now, I did put these kind of close to the tree, but I do know these trees are gonna to continue to grow and get larger too. And I kind of like the idea that eventually they'll slightly encapsulate the backside of these stones and busts. And I want that, because I think that will make it look a lot more like it's been here and a lot more just complete. So I'm putting them slightly out from the tree, but also adjusting knowing that the tree is gonna somewhat keep growing and get bushier, taller, wider, and will slowly encroach on them a little bit, which I think I'll really like. So to start, I'm going to take my line, take my half moon edger, and know that I'm gonna make a cut mark. So I'm going to set it up and start making my cuts in the ground. So when I'm doing this, it's just like I'd be edging a new flower bed and I'm going deep in and cutting. Now, we're kind of dry, like I said. This would be easier, actually, if we had a little bit more moisture in the ground, but we don't, and we work with what we have to work with. So I'm gonna go outwards here, check my lines again, go out, and then just start making my big square. Now, again, what you can also do is make, you can make a template, if you wanted to, of each one so you knew exactly the same. All my stones vary slightly, so they're not exactly the same which means each square will be slightly different. So I don't mind if there's a little bit of extra rock on the perimeter of it at the moment until I take the grass out, then the grass won't grow all the way up to it for trimming anyway. So this will work pretty well. So once I have my square cut, I took out a little piece of the sod and now I can get in with my spade and I can just go under and lift that sod. So this is the same as I would do if I was putting in a flower bed pretty much. I'm going a little bit deeper here just cause I'm gonna continue to dig out some soil in order to put the rock base in. But overall, it's the same concept. And you know, when it's more wet, yes, it's easier to shovel, but then also the grass gets more heavy and the soil gets more heavy because it has the moisture content in it. So it's kind of a pick or choose, it's a little bit harder to dig when it's dry, but the soil's lighter weight. Also when it's you know wetter, it's easier to do this, but then it is more heavy. So it just kind of depends. And we're just gonna go in and we're going to just lift all that out and then I'll start digging the hole out. Okay, one thing I am trying to do a better job at is have something, this is just a container a tree came in that I can put the soil in then go dump it. Just instead of having it all over my yard where I have to then rake it or get it back in. I'm not always the best at that because sometimes I'm too much in a hurry, don't have the patience, but a tarp or something like this really does work well. So now that I have my hole dug, I'm just gonna fill it up with the rock. We're gonna get it leveled off. Then I'm gonna move on, do one more, then we'll place the stones. Okay, it, get, it keeps getting windier out today, so my hair keeps getting wilder and wilder. So I set this last one that you can see, it's leveled off, it has the rock. I have one stone with me in the skid loader bucket, and then I'm gonna go get over, they're over at the main farm, my mom's house across the road. I'm gonna go get the other two, set those, and then we'll be good to go. I mean, it's a pretty simple project. It's just kind of a fun one for me personally, just because I love those pieces in the garden that can kind of just draw your eye from a distance. So I'm gonna set the one off, then go get the two, we'll finish with those, and then we'll put the bus on them and we'll be good to go. Okay, the wind is picking up, but I just came over with the last two big stones. Now, let's be honest, I'm not doing a video like this to try to say everyone go out and get the biggest stones and hurt your back. No, you have to be safe doing this. And if you're not comfortable, you need to get professionals that can move things. You know, I have a skid loader and that helps me have a piece of equipment that's safe. I also put my French Bulldog Kip inside when I'm moving that skid loader. So I'm gonna show you kind of how I do move it just because honestly, I get so many questions when I'm doing stories or giving little snapshots around my yard and people wanna see how it happens, how it goes in. And so that's what this is all about. How does it happen? And so I'm showing you <laughs> what I do. It's not always 
the easiest. It takes some work, but I do it slowly to make sure I don't hurt myself or do anything bad, and that's the big thing. So let me flip this around so I can kind of show what I'm doing. So I have three placed, one, whoop, two, and then beyond me, three, and now this is the last one to do. So you can see what I really do is I lift my bucket, I tip it down so I can lightly let it kind of gravity fall out onto the gravel, and then I will back up the skid loader so it stays in place. It's not quite always perfect, but honestly it works. <laughs> it works amazingly well for me doing this. And I've done it with quite a few others. So I'm gonna set this last one. Sometimes I have to adjust it slightly once it's on the gravel because you know, depending if you tip it too much, it can kind of burrow in the back, move rock a little bit, so you may have to level it. But I'm gonna set this here, then I'll go get the remaining three, three ladies, the three seasons, and we'll have it all done. It's just kind of one of those fun things. Okay, I just placed the last one. <clears throat> so we have four of them going down in a row, which makes me actually really happy. So this is a thought I had quite a few years ago and it's taken me a while just to think it through, but also to find those plinths. So if you're wondering these plinths, they're big, solid limestone, extremely heavy. I found them on Facebook Marketplace and they were like, super reasonable for what they are. Like if you had to go to a quarry, one, you'd have to figure out how to get them to you or freight them or ship them. And these are, these are quarried in Iowa, but it's still hard to get to. But then also it would be really expensive. So these were a steal and I just was looking for the right thing. So these are the perfect item to set these on. But let me flip this around so you can see it a little bit better. So you can see now, once all the trees keep growing in, the, the ones I got this year are slightly a different color, but honestly that's my fault because, you know, anytime something is molded, colored in a factory, if you're gonna get it in, at different times, it's gonna be different colors. I do think these will actually, these are the old ones. I think the new ones will age out slightly. And you can see the color variance, it's darker, the brand new one. It's just kind of how it is. And I do think it will age slightly. And I may eventually just try to stain this a little darker if I need to, because you can get stain from the company, I believe, to make it darker, but I love them. They, I just, I really do, I, oh, I think I might wanna switch those two. But anyway, I really love them because we have fall, spring, winter, summer. So I might switch those so it's fall, spring, summer, winter. But anyway, I think they're just fun. So if we keep backing up, come on, Kip. There he comes, he likes them too. If we keep backing up from the house now and just from the backyard, I can really see these four just like iconic statue type elements in the garden, which I really like and it makes me happy. Eventually, like I said, I think I wanna make a big rhododendron bed around all of them to go down the whole tree line, which I think will be really pretty. Color in the spring, <clears throat> that fun glossy leaf. So we'll see, but for now, this is exactly, I don't know, it's kind of fun to see something in your head that you were thinking and then bring it out. So now when I'm doing stories or showing things, hopefully you can see what I do a little bit behind the scenes to get things to happen so they look the way I want them to. You know, gardens, they really do. I'm always saying this, but it's so true. They take so much time. They take lots of time, they take energy, they take thought, and sometimes it changes, it evolves, and you have to redo or adjust later on. But that's the fun of it, that you can slowly create these visions that were dreams into reality. It's fun. So I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you share this video around just because, yeah, that helps me, but it helps everyone see, guess what? We all do it different, and yet somehow we all make it work. A garden is each person's imagination. That's the fun. So have fun with it. Enjoy it. I'm going to keep working.